my doctor on Tuesday told me that I think he had kind of heard of carnivore, but never had a patient that was on carnivore. And when I told him I hadn't had any fruits or vegetables or anything like that in 90 days, he was just astonished. He said, well, I think you probably need to introduce some fruits and vegetables into your diet. Scott, how did you find carnivore? Well, it's kind of a long journey. Um, I've been heavy for most of my adult life. Um, I have tried other weight loss programs in the past. Um, I'm so old that I actually did slim fast for a while back in the early 90s, late 80s. Remember that? Um, I tried Weight Watchers. I've tried Caveman. I've tried Keto. And I've lost some weight. I just haven't been able to maintain losing it um, because I would fall back into my old habits. Um, and generally, those habits are related around sweet stuff and lots and lots of carbs. Um, my wife and I were, were on vacation in Colorado in early October of this last year. And we met one of my college roommates out there who's living out in Colorado. And we had dinner with he and his wife one Saturday night. And my friend Jim, I've known for 45 years, and he can be and is always brutally honest with me. So when he saw me for the first time in about a year, he said, wow, you've really gotten fat. And I said, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. I have. And so we kind of talked about that, that, you know, he's always kind of telling me you need to do this, you need to do that. And I wouldn't say Jim's a health freak, but he's a runner, has always been a runner. So he's always been skinny. You know, I always say he weighs about 165 pounds, soaking wet, wearing two winter coats. I mean, he's just he's kind of skinny as a rail, but he's always looked good. It's not like he looks unhealthy. But he told me he had gained some weight recently and decided to try to lose it. And he started doing the carnivore diet. And I don't think I'd really heard of it. My wife, who's a nurse, had heard of it. And so we started talking about it over at dinner. And I realized, and he's telling me about the, the ins and outs of the carnivore. And I realized at dinner then, he's just eating a steak. He sent the potato back, didn't have any vegetables. He's just eating a steak. That's it. So we kind of talked about it. And the, uh, the next morning, Colleen and I were, my wife and I were kind of talking about it. And of course, being the nurse and she's big into researching stuff, he had done a lot of research on her phone about carnivore. And she said, you know, what I read is it's like keto, but on steroids. And I had done some keto before. If you've if you've seen stuff from like Maria Emmerich, uh, the keto stuff, you know, I've kind of followed that and it was okay, but I still went back and I gained my weight back. And when we got home on that Sunday, I told her, I said, you know, I'm willing to give keto a try. My, like I said, I've been heavy for most of my adult life. And as a nurse, she's been very concerned about my being pre-diabetic. Um, my A1C was always high, high. It was 5.7, 5.8. Um, and I have a family history of diabetes. My father died of, of kidney failure from diabetes. My, his brother died of it and his mother died of it. Um, but they all had type one, but she's concerned about my size and, you know, and the inactivity that I would turn into a type two diabetic. And then I'd really have to start taking medication. I've got high blood pressure. I started taking high blood pressure medication probably four or five years ago just to be able to keep it under control. Um, and I always kind of prided myself before that on the fact that, oh, yeah, I'm 55 years old or I'm 60 years old and I don't take any medication. And, well, I, I buckled and just decided it's for my better health and I'd start taking the high blood pressure med. But I really would like to get off of it. But the doctor has told me, you know, the only way you're going to get off it is if you drop some weight. If you take the weight off, then you probably won't have that problem and I can take you off the medication. And it's not a big deal. I mean, it's one little tiny pill once a day and it's not restrictive or anything, but I just I just wanted to get off of it because I don't want it to lead to other problems. Um, so Colleen and I talked about it and I said, you know, I was willing to give it a try. Um, I know my problems before that have always obviously centered around carbs. I love carbs. I love sweets. Um, I always describe it as you could set a plate of roast beef down in front of my wife and a cheesecake in front of me. She'd eat the roast beef. I'd eat the cheesecake. I just crave the sweets and, you know, bread and pasta and, and all that stuff that turns out is really horrible for you. It's poison. Um, so I said, I'll, I'll try this. 
you know, I'll do the carnivore. And that was a Sunday. So we decided we'd get tacos from the place down the street. And I had a couple of cocktails and some cookies. And, you know, it's like, kind of like my last supper. And went to bed that night, woke up about four hours, hours later with acid reflux again. You know, it's horrible. I got up Monday morning. I said, yep, this is the day I'm starting carnivore. And I just started it cold turkey, not easing into it, you know, like, well, I'm going to eat bread for another week and pasta for another week, whatever. I just said, fine. Starting tonight, that's it. I'm I'm just doing carnivore. And probably at least a year ago, my wife had kind of transitioned me into intermittent fasting. So I was generally only eating dinner. I wasn't eating breakfast. I was drinking coffee for breakfast. I wasn't eating lunch. Well, and I was eating lunch. Uh, you know, if I go to work and I'm eating lunch at work, I'd go get some fast food. Whatever it was, it was going to be horrible for me. And then when I'd get home, I'd snack and snack and snack on really horrible stuff. Um, but with this, it was absolutely just shut it off. It's like I shut the spigot off, you know, no more bread, no more pasta, no more cookies, no more chips, no more fruit, no more vegetables, nothing. I'm just going to do meat, eggs, dairy, and seafood, which I like all four of those. So it's like you don't have to give me a reason to, reason to eat some of that stuff. And so I started it on October 9th, and I weighed I got on the scale of October 29th. I weighed 281 pounds and I did it religiously. And um, within about the first week, I lost 10 pounds, which, you know, when you're 281, it's easy to lose 10 pounds in seven days. I mean, it's probably all water weight. It's no big deal. But the weight loss kept up. And at that point, I'm still not doing any exercise. I'm not going for walks. I'm not lifting weights, anything. And I got about three or four weeks into it and I decided I'd start walking and the weight kept coming off. And within the first month, I lost 25 pounds, which for me was pretty good. I've lost weight before and I would lose 15 to 20, but now I'm 25 pounds down and I'm feeling better. The other thing I did was when I went on the carnivore diet, I stopped drinking alcohol, totally stopped drinking alcohol. I don't, I, I probably drink two, drink two beers a year. Um, so mostly it's hard liquor. It's either gin, vodka, or bourbon. And my problem is that I like a sweet bourbon drink or a sweet gin drink. And I could get two or three of me in, in me at home. And then I'd eat everything that wasn't nailed down in the kitchen. So, and, and that would last a couple of days. And so it wasn't just, oh, I'm getting the empty al calories from the alcohol. I'm gorging myself on this, all this other crap. And I keep gaining weight. So with stopping the alcohol, then I also started sleeping better at night. I mean, I would lay down in bed about 10 o'clock and I wouldn't wake up until about 530. And there was no tossing and turning, none of that stuff. So I was feeling better, you know, and I noticed a little bit uh, that my joints felt a little better. My knees felt a little better. Um, got into it enough. And after the second month, I had lost another 20. So I was down 45 pounds. Well, now I've been on carnivore for right at, I think Saturday is 90 days and I'm down 61 pounds and I really feel good. And as Jim says, I've got probably another 40 pounds to go, which would get me down to 180, 181 pounds, which to me is probably a little less than I weighed in college 45 years ago. Um, but it's easy to do. I find this diet easier to do than car or a keto because keto, you know, you could adjust your macros and, you know, how much protein and, and fat you're going to take in and how many carbs you're going to take in. And you could set it so I, I'm only going to take in 30 carbs today or I'm going to take in 40 carbs today. Well, I went to 50. That's no big deal. Or, uh, you know, I'm not going to count calories or carbs or anything this weekend. You know, I'm going to have a cheat day or I'm going to have a cheat weekend, which, you know, like I said, cheat day turns into a cheat weekend and that turns into a cheat week and that's a cheat month. And there was another guy I saw on a podcast with you who, who had the phrase of, and then it's a carb catastrophe because suddenly you jump off that. And, but in the 90 days that I've been on this, I have had no added sugar. I've had no fruit, no vegetables, um, no bread. So no wheat, no alcohol, nothing. I've had just a meat, eggs, dairy, and seafood. The only indulgence I think I would say I've had is I've had some Greek yogurt, which has a few carbs in it, 
and I put some whey protein in it to, for a little bit of flavoring, and that's it. I went through Halloween, didn't have any candy. I went through, I mean, we're in the United States, so we went through Thanksgiving. I just ate turkey, no pies, no desserts, no sides, anything. And we just went through Christmas, and I didn't have anything except prime rib. No treats, no cookies, no Christmas cookies, no pies, no desserts, nothing. And, you know, most people gain weight over Christmas. I had a couple of guys at work told me that, that one guy gained seven pounds and he's on a diet. The other guy gained 10 because they went off the wagon for, for the holidays. And now they're really paying the price. And I thought, gosh, I lost like three or four pounds over Christmas. So I really feel good. I mean, it's it's a um, the way I feel and the, the smaller I'm getting and the fact that my clothes don't fit anymore, you know, and my, my fat clothes don't even fit anymore and I'm getting even smaller. The other day I went to... Uh, my doctor, I hadn't seen him in a while. And so I wanted a complete blood work done because I've not been in this in 90 days. Right as this started, I had to go to the doctor and I got a blood draw and I asked him to draw my A1C. And my A1C at that point was 5.8. Well, Tuesday when I went to the doctor and they did the same thing, my A1C dropped to 5.3. So it dropped a half a point in 90 days. And all it is is the diet. I mean, I've, I've eliminated all that junk and I feel so much better. It's amazing. Congratulations on, uh, on such fast results. Thank you. I mean, that That's awesome. I have, um, we have seven grandkids and I don't think any one of my grandkids has ever seen me this skinny and I'm <laughs> still 220 pounds. So it, it, it's still big, but, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's nice. So. So what what is what is your thinking uh, uh, with the way things are going now? I mean, what what do you feel about say the next six months? Where do you think you'll be in six months from now? Well, my goal in six months is to get rid of that other forty. Um, I'd like to get rid of it by first of June. You know, when the swimming pool's open. Um, but if it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, as long as I'm seeing results like this, and and my um, my blood test when they came back, I said the, the A1C had dropped. Um, I hadn't had my cholesterol checked in about a year and a half. My cholesterol Tuesday was a total of 181. So my triglycerides had dropped in a year and a half from 180 to 79. So everything came back really wonderfully. Um, I, at this point, I envision just doing the same thing. I started, like I said, I started walking. I walk probably five or six times a week. Um, if I can do it outside, I'll do it outside. Otherwise, I do it on a treadmill. I'll walk from 30 to 60 minutes. I lift weights for 20 minutes to three or four times a week. I try to do it every other day um, to get a little, uh, building a little muscle so that it uses more calories, you know, and so I'm not getting soft. I'm not wasting away. Um, I'm at this point, I'm, I have no plans to start drinking again. I'm sure, I'm sure someday I'll have something, but at this point, I see the positive results and I don't want to do anything to mess with that. You know, I, I see me dropping weight because I'm not eating the carbs. My doctor on Tuesday told me that I think he had kind of heard of carnivore, but never had a patient that was on carnivore. And when I told him I hadn't had any fruits or vegetables or anything like that in 90 days. He was just astonished. He said, well, I think you probably need to introduce some fruits and vegetables into your diet. I mean, that's part of a healthy diet. He told me we're meant to be herbivores, but no, we're not meant to be herbivores. Maybe omnivores, but it never had anybody but carnivore. I said, you know, once I get my goal weight, yeah, then I'll maybe ease back into a, a vegetable or, or something. I kind of like to have some broccoli again once in a while, but um, I I, I know people talk about when they lose weight, oh, I'm never going back. I'm never going to do that again. Well, we are probably are going to all do that again. But it's a question of how, if you can continue to do this and do it in moderation. Um, if I'm going to have some fruit, just a little bit of fruit. You know, when I was the heaviest, yeah, I could eat an entire bowl of fresh blueberries laying on the couch watching TV. Not healthy for you. Probably healthier to do that than eat a whole bag of chips like I've done before. But still, I mean, it's like, which is healthier, heroin or cocaine? You know, they're both bad for you. So I just have to limit it down. So uh, like I said, if, if I continue to see the good results like I've got now, I think it'll be easier to stay with. 
and if I don't have cheat days or cheat weeks and stuff like that, I I think it'll be easier to stick with it. So, I mean, my my wife likes the results. She she likes the way I look now. I'm not embarrassed the way I look because I had a huge stomach on me. I mean, that's where I put most of my weight on. I'd still have skinny ankles, but my stomach was really huge and and that's going away and then I think once I hit probably 200, I don't have a whole lot of what would be necessarily be outside body fat anymore. I probably now then down to the visceral fat, the the fat that's inside of me. And I know that's going to be harder to get rid of and take me longer to get rid of. But I see, I see light at the end of the tunnel. I see the results that I'm getting. I like, so there's all reason to keep doing this. I told my wife, I said, had I got any blood tests back the other day and everything was horrible. Like my A1C hadn't gone down and you know, my blood sugar was up and this was bad and this was bad and this was bad. And I thought, well, why am I doing this? Because it's not doing anything for me. Well, and I guess fortunately it showed me, yeah, it's really working. This, it, it is, I'm getting the results that people talk about on the internet or, or uh, with other people on carnivore. I feel good. And it's, I'm eating all fresh fruit. I, you know, I haven't had any processed foods. I mean, maybe have some salami once in a while, um, but other than that, I mean, everything is fresh. So it's easy to me. It's easy to stay on. Yeah, I, I think that's that's also the thing for me. It's just so easy to do. Yeah. Like the prospect of going back to the other way of eating, um, it's not even the it's not even the bloating or anything like that that kind of puts me off going back to a regular way of eating it's the time commitment involved when you're actually when you actually see how easy it is to do this now yes yes and i and i tell my my friends and my relatives about this and their response sometimes is a little bit like there was a podcast you did that said you know you're in when you live in japan and you tell people in japan that you're on the carnivore diet and you explain it to them and they all generally respond oh i'm japanese i couldn't do that that's kind of their response too. Oh, I could never do that. I can never give this up or I can never give that up. Okay, well, I did. I chose to do it and it's working for me. Might not work for you. It's working for me. So, you know, there, there are lots of people that Weight Watchers works for. Didn't work for me. It just didn't. So this does and I, and I like doing it. Yeah. And it's it's good. I mean, I'm, I'm not, it's not like I'm eating, oh, I'm eating the diet version of uh, pasta or um, for a while there, my wife would serve us, and I'm not criticizing, she would serve us the spaghetti squash as the alternative to spaghetti. Well, it doesn't taste like spaghetti. And it's, it, to me, it's like I'm, I'm being punished because I have to eat spaghetti squash instead of getting to eat spaghetti. Well, this, I'm eating all really good foods. I'm just eating more of that and none of the other crap. So to me, that's why it's easy to, easy to stick to. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so has uh, uh, that's great that your wife's supportive with this. Has she considered doing this herself? She did. She kind of started it with me. Um, she lasted probably a month and a half on it. I mean, I've been on it three months now, and she slowly started weaning herself off of that. She had, I would say, um, I'm not telling any secrets here, she probably had more digestive issues with it, internal issues with it than I did. You know, they talk about having the diarrhea for up to two weeks. I had it for probably about a day and a half and that was it. So I was on to the, the, the next phase of it. It kind of racked her system a little bit more. Um, and so she wasn't totally into it. She's gone back to eating some vegetables now, um, which is fine. I support her in that. I just, you can eat that. I'm, I'm going to eat this. So um, but as a nurse, she's very supportive of this. And my wife of 41 years, she's very supportive of this because she doesn't want to see me go away. So she sees the health benefits of it. She sees, I mean, before when I, um, when I'd sleep, I would snore like crazy. You know, I would snore sometimes so hard. I'd actually wake myself up. Um, I know probably a good four or five years ago when I was snoring so much, uh, she had me go do a sleep study. And of course, they have recommended uh, wanting to give me the Darth Vader mask, you know, the, doing the CPAP machine. And I, I was dead set against that. I didn't want to do that. I said, fine, I'll lose the weight. And I lost a little bit of weight and then gained it back. And I never did anything else. So it was just like one problem after the other. And it seems that 
And she's right that, you know, once I lose the weight, once I lost about 10 or 15 pounds, because I lost some of it in my neck, I no longer had that pressure on my neck and, and my, my throat, and I stopped snoring. And so I don't snore anymore. So, I mean, it's, there's good health benefits to it, too. But she's very, been very supportive of it. So, I mean, she's constantly on her phone or, or on the Internet looking at, well, this doctor says this, or this, there's this podcast. You need to watch this. And, and my friend Jim is about the same way. And, and I got I to gotta hand it to Jim and give credit to Jim, too my friend Jim, because, because he's on it. We're almost like, like diet buddies. So we text each other every day. I mean, he says, take pictures of your food. So we know, we know what you're eating. We all, and he sends me pictures of his food. I send him pictures of my food. And then we we trade the nutritional values on it. We, my wife has always said that if I want to lose weight, I want to do something. And there's two things I have to do. I want to have to be, get addicted to it, like the weight loss. And two, I need to journalize my food because it's much easier to, as I'm eating, right, you know, uh, put it in my phone in the app. When I use the, the my fitness pal app, put all the, the food in because so I can look at it and say, well, I'm done. I've had my calories or I've had my protein or fat for today. I'm done. As opposed to trying to remember, what did I eat this morning? What did I have for lunch? You know, where am I? Oh, I'll just have some more cookies or whatever. So. I journalize all that stuff. I, I, I record it all into the, the fitness pal so I know where I'm at. Jim does the same thing with a different app, but we kind of help each other and kind of bounce stuff off each other about, well, I'm eating this or you should try this or you should try that. But then Jim's doing the same thing with me that Colleen is doing. And he's he's sending me videos of you. He's sending me videos of, of Dr. Ken Berry or he sent me videos of uh, a Dr. Sewis down in Florida. And all these different ones, uh, uh, or, or this study, and it, it kind of helps to have a supportive person in your corner for that. Um, kind of will tell me I'm fat, and Jim will tell me I'm fat, and I am fat. So, um, but they they help both help a lot tremendously, and I think you need that in order to be able to survive this. I think if you tried to do it by yourself, it probably wouldn't work because you'd get bored with it and feel lonely because I can't go out. I mean, in the, the three months we've been on this, I think my wife and I have been out for dinner three times, where we used to go out at least once a week um, because we just stay home and cook. And we don't really want to go to the restaurant to say, okay, I'll have the steak. It's the same price, but don't give me anything else. And most of the time we can get better steaks at one of our butcher shops than we can in the restaurants anyway. So, but nice. yeah, they've been very helpful. And the thing is, when you're eating at home, at least you know what's going in it. You know, at yes. least you know what's being cooked in and stuff like that. Yes, absolutely. Mm. So that's awesome that you've got um, you've got your friend Jim to kind of support you that way. Um, what what would you say to someone who's out there that doesn't have that that doesn't have um someone doing this with them how how do you think having experienced it now for three months how do you think it's best to kind of stay the distance um i would say if you didn't have somebody like my wife or jim in your corner to kind of prod you along and keep you with it there is so much information available on the internet and i'm i'm talking about like youtube channels um, your channel, Barry, Dr. Barry's channel. Um, there are a number of them out there that have the podcasts that you can then see other other interviews of people talking about what they're doing, what works for them, what doesn't work for them, and some of the, the people um, having presentations as to what works. The you know the ten carnivore mistakes, the ten diet mistakes, the ten the ten things you should do, the ten things you shouldn't do. Um, what also is once you get it far enough into that, there are enough of them that say, well, these are the studies. And this is why, you know, this study, this UCLA study says, if you eat a lot of meat, you're going to get diabetes. And then they break that down and say, well, that's not really what it said. And the funny thing is they included in their category of meat, lasagna. So they included a lot of things that aren't meat into the meat category. And sure, if you eat lots of lasagna, yeah, you probably will get diabetes. Because it's all the sauce, it's all the sugar, it's it's all the pasta, which means it's all the wheat and all the carbs. Um, I think there's enough out there in the internet, uh, in 
in the interwebs that you can watch a lot of videos and there's a lot of information whether you want to read it or or watch it um there's a lot of support groups on facebook i i can't believe if you just type in carnivore on facebook you probably get 10 or 15 different carnivore groups and then all of a sudden what pops up are the different carnivore blogs that people are doing so i think there's enough out there if you if you look for it if you don't look for it then you're never obviously never going to find it but um it's out there to help you nice so um just back on your health improvements so um 60 pounds down your a1c has improved your cholesterol your total cholesterol is good your triglycerides are good um you're doing a lot of exercise I, i'm assuming you actually that's exercise you actually want to do it's not you're not forcing yourself to do that well i get up at five o'clock in the morning to go up to the club to go walk on the treadmill and lift weights because it's frankly easier for me to do it at five in the morning when i'm awake playing on the phone in my bed than it is to come home from work at 5 30 and have my wife say well let's eat dinner well i want to go work out for an hour and a half yeah, and it's eight o'clock and then we don't want to eat after eight o'clock and you know it's winter and after eight o'clock it's all dark and we want to go to bed and all that so no it's it's stuff i want to do absolutely you know um you know when i was not not much younger but when i lost a bunch of weight 10 or 12 years ago god i exercised an hour to two hours a day the weekends i would ride my bike 50 and 60 miles a day and it was just i was just a fiend at it um and after a while it got to be kind of a grind um like it was just too much to do and i don't feel like walking 45 minutes on the treadmill is is a grind um i've got routes around my neighborhood we've got trails around our house that i know which trail if i want to walk for 45 minutes i know what trail i how far i have to go on the trail and where i have to start start back so i can walk 45 minutes or if i want to do an hour and it's just relaxing it also gives you time to kind of clear your mind you know you're just out walking as opposed to doing anything else. And I'm not watching TV. I generally don't take my earphones, my earbuds when I go walking. So it's just it's just me walking. So, um, you know, the lifting of the weights is more of a to be able to make myself stronger. You know, to replace replace some of the fat with muscle. You know, granted, I, I realized that replacing the, the the fat with some muscle is probably going to make me a little bit heavier but it's going to make me a little healthier looking too um and i can you know easily take care of myself so um and i got kind of into a, a bind where i wasn't doing it I, I was trying to feel i thought my, i was younger than i was probably a good five or six years ago i was up at the, the club and we were in the swimming pool and i was going to get out of the swimming pool so i was going to just going to jump up on the edge and push myself out well and i felt something tear up here you know so and that made me stop want to stop working out and you know lifting weights because this hurt too bad and so i just stopped and just didn't do anything about it i'd walk once in a while but i wouldn't do anything with my arms well now that i've started lifting weights this doesn't hurt as bad anymore so it's you know it, it's like i said i see positive results to it which then makes me want to keep going you know so it's i'll keep going as long as i see positive results and if i get when i get to that spot later this spring or later this summer where i'm at the ideal weight to me that's probably the more difficult part of this okay now you're here what are you going to do now and that's when i have to you know keep going and saying okay maybe i'll introduce some broccoli or a little bit of vegetables a little bit of fruit and no bread still do that and let's let's see what let's see what happens when i eat a bowl of rice you know does my blood sugar go up do i feel like crap do, do I start gaining weight and maybe introduce maybe one change at a time as opposed to, well, I'm going to eat a bunch of stuff today and I'm not going to, and, and when I feel really bad, I'm not going to know which one or combination of which one, which ones cause this. So, you know. yeah, I mean, when you've eliminated everything to the point of just eating like meat and eggs, it's much easier then to kind of test like that, right? Okay, well, yeah. how will I go with a sweet potato? How am I going to go with some broccoli? How am I going to go with this? And yes, you get you get results pretty quickly. So yeah, yeah. My wife mm. was always was concerned with too. 
over the last year or two with the, um, she was concerned about my insulin resistance because I was so big and, you know, the, the type two diabetes and stuff. She had discovered that or, and found something on the internet about um, the starches like rice and potatoes that, you know, you take a, t a potato and either fry it or you bake it or you make the rice and you serve it hot. It has a certain insulin resistance to it. And, but if you take that same like, like rice, if you make the rice, heat it up, and then cool it. You put it in the refrigerator, cool it, and then you go reheat it or you use it as part of sushi or something. It doesn't have the same insulin resistance level to it. It's much less. You don't have much of a spike to it. And same with potatoes. So it got to a point where if we were going to have rice with a meal, we'd make the rice the night before. Or if we were going to have potatoes, we'd make them in the morning, put it in the refrigerator, and then we just heat them back up for us to eat them just to kind of see. And I'd like to be able to get to that point where we like and kind of introduce some of that back in. Maybe it won't be an, uh, you know, a, a baked potato the size of my foot, like it used to be, you know, lathered in all sorts of butter, you know, and, and I didn't eat sour cream on it. I didn't like that, but I, it was a meal in and of itself. And when I would eat a baked potato like that, I would eat the entire potato. I mean, skin and all. So I was, I was a real, I was a real good member, good member and standing of the clean plate club, you know, I figure I saw my plate, I'm going to eat it. And a lot of times too, what I would do is I'd eat mine and then Colleen's not done with hers or she's, she's done. She's not going to finish it. I, I'd finish that too. So I think those days are kind of gone. So, nice. and we, so and we, we take smaller portions now too. So, cause I know this is what I'm going to eat. So on that on that point, um, how are you eating at the moment? Like what do you two mean? meals a day, one meal one a meal, day, one meal a day. Um, at best, if I have breakfast, it'll be Sunday. After we get home from church, I'll make us some breakfast, and generally it's going to be eggs and bacon. Um, a couple of years ago, she had found a recipe for chaffles. You know, you know what a chaffle is? Chaffle is literally eggs and cheese. You mix like three eggs and a cup of, of grated cheese, whether it's the, the pepper jack blend or the or mozzarella or just cheddar cheese. You mix it with three eggs and you put it in a waffle iron and you make little tiny waffles or chuffles. So they don't have the carbs with it. Now, one of the recipes we found also wanted you to put some almond flour in it, which we generally don't do. But they also want you to put maybe some baking powder in it. So that kind of lightens it up, kind of fluffs it up a little bit. But we'll use that instead of having an English muffin, and I'll make eggs Benedict. You know, all very healthy for me. Um, we either use some old crab, not old crab, but some leftover crab or some canned crab, or we'll use um, some bacon or something on it. But if I eat breakfast, it's only going to be on Sundays, and that's it. I, I don't eat lunch. I might snack a little bit. I might have some, you know, some fresh roast beef or, you know, some cheese or something during the day. But otherwise, really a, a sit-down meal, I, I only eat dinner. Whereabouts are you in the U.S.? Uh, we live in Omaha, Nebraska, which is almost dead center in the country. So, and what's it like there getting uh, getting the beef that you need? Do you go to the local Costco or? Well, look, I go to the local Costco, local or local grocery store. A lot of beef that's uh, produced and shipped in the country is shipped um, from about four miles from our house. Um, so you, you know, we you heard of Omaha steaks? That's in Omaha, and then we have lots of big packing plants in here, and they ship beef all across the country it's not the problem with our beef, but well, a problem with our beef is it's generally all corn fed from start grains all from start to finish. I mean, you know, the last month or so they'll feed them lots and lots of corn. Well, now the one I'm finding is that no, they really want you to steer away from the corn fed beef and they want you to get the grass fed beef. So we started switching over to that. We'll buy grass fed uh, hamburger if we can find it. And I mean, I found some last night at Walmart. That's what I had for dinner last night, grass-fed hamburger. Um, it to me, it still tastes just about the same as the as the corn-fed um, uh, does. So I'm fine with that. Um, I eat lots of steak. Um, like tonight, I'm going to have a um, uh, small chuck chuck eye steak, which is like a tiny ribeye, and I think I'm going to have some chicken uh, thighs. 
Um, I had seen a video from somebody uh, that was, they were talking about their diet, you know, what they make during the day, what they eat during the day. They found that just eating one thing, like, I don't know, there's a, there's a guy online that just eats bacon. You know, I, I can't do that. Or just eats hamburger. Um, and I kind of like a little variety. Well, she said that what she does is she always, she never eats one meat alone. She'll eat it with something else. Like she'll eat steak with some chicken, kind of, kind of give her some variety as opposed to just sitting down with one thing. I kind of ran into a, uh, that issue at Thanksgiving when the families are over and I just had 16 ounces of turkey on my plate because that's what we had. And after a while, I got kind of old, but I, I soldiered through and I ate it all, but, and I didn't fall off the wagon at all. But had I decided, you know what, I'm just going to have some turkey. I'm going to have some, um, some bacon maybe too, and I'll maybe make myself a hamburger. Everybody else is having all these other sides. I'm just going to eat this. Um, so we obviously we eat lots of beef. We eat lots of chicken. We eat lots of eggs. I mean, thank God Costco sells them in two dozen packs. Um, I've also started buying some of the grass-fed eggs. They're eggs from grass-fed chickens. You know, so they get the grass, they get the bugs and the insects and, and all that out of the, the grass. And so they're not grain fed either. And I had seen something about it. Well, you know, you see people are saying, well, you can't tell if it's a grass fed egg. No, you can tell it's a grass fed egg because, you know, the, the regular egg yolks are yellow. And then the organic ones are, are a little bit orange. And then these grass fed ones, they are bright orange, like the orange piping on your shirt. I mean, they're that bright. They taste a little better, you know, um, and I guess they're probably better for me. So. Um, other than that, I, I eat some cheese and I eat some yogurt and I, I, I've always loved seafood. My wife has never really liked seafood within the last five or 10 years. I've gotten her to like scallops and, um, salmon. Um, she'll eat her idea of seafood was going to Long John Silver's because she loved the coating and stuff on that. And it was kind of funny because she really wanted the coating. If we went to Long John Silver's years ago, I'd pull all the coating off because I don't want that. I want the fish. I like the seafood. So the fact that I, I'm allowed or, you know, I have to eat seafood as a part of the diet, I'm fine with that. I love seafood. You know, we've got uh, salmon in our freezer right now. I've got shrimp in our freezer right now. I've got scallops in our freezer right now. And I just, I don't need an excuse to eat it. So, I'm, but now I've got the green light to eat as much as I want of it. Okay. So I will. That's awesome. You can do your own little surf and turf. For, absolutely. For yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And then, you know, like tomorrow night, we I've got some uh, um, wild-caught coho salmon that I bought at Costco. Uh, we'll have that. We'll have some, some scallops with it. And I've got some shrimp in there, and I'm going to have just a seafood fest. I just won't have the broccoli, and I won't have a baked potato with it. So and that's it. So, and, and at that point, I and mean, I've done that before too, like lots of that, like lots of, I'll eat flounder with it or, or I'll eat some tilapia with it. Um, and then when I look at my macros, like my, my protein has gone through the roof and I've, there's hardly any fat in it at all. I remember eating, God, I remember I must have had eight or 10 ounces of flounder one day and it was like 80 grams of protein and no fat. So um, I, I, I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm obviously doing okay. You know, I'm not wasting away. Um, I had, when I started this diet, and I still do, have enough stored fats that I don't need the rest of those carbs. I've got plenty of onboard fuel. So that allows me to eat the rest of this stuff. I'm I'm fine with that. And the important thing is you're feeling good. Yes. And, you know, that's uh, what I've learned from keto here and there over the last 20 odd years and finally finding carnivore is you really need to think about how your body's feeling you you your body is the person your body is the thing that's telling you whether this is right or wrong it doesn't matter what the doctors say it doesn't matter what they say on tv it's it's how you feel it is um one of the things that jim had told me was when i asked him about the keto diet i said or the carnivore diet you know, how much water are you drinking a day? Because all these doctors are saying, you know, I need to drink a gallon of water a day. And he said, since the beginning of time, we drink water when we're thirsty. There's no requirement that we have to drink a gallon of water a day. Just you drink when you're thirsty. So I generally do that. I will drink coffee 
I mean, I'm an American. I drink coffee in the morning from the time I get up until about noon. I'm tired of it. I probably at that point had a half a pot of coffee, maybe a little bit more. And then I'll switch over to water. You know, I don't, I wasn't a really big pop drinker before anyway. I, I would drink pop if we got some fast food on the way home. If I picked my wife up from work and I hadn't made anything for dinner, it's like, okay, we either make something when we get home or pick the place on the way home. Where do you want me to stop and pick us something up that's really horrible for us, you know? Um, so I don't really drink pop. I hadn't drink pop in, pop in quite a while. And so I just drink water. And really, I drink fizzy water, you know, or, or I drink the Costco version of it. Um, it to me, it's kind of like having pop, but it's not. I mean, it's just water. So um, no juice, no pop, nothing like that. So I, it, I like the way it tastes and it, it keeps me on the diet. So I, I drink enough of that. I probably drink four of those a day. I drink a little bit of them at dinner and I, you know, I'm adjusted enough that I know that I need to stop drinking that by about eight o'clock. Otherwise I'm going to get up about midnight and pee, you know, and if I drink enough of them, I'm going to get up a couple of times. I mean, I'm, I'm not a young spring chicken anymore, so it happens. So, um, but I, I keep myself hydrated and, and I don't have any issues I, and I, and I feel good. Um, and I, I guess I kind of felt good doing the keto diet, but I, you know, the keto diet, I could, I could eat a lot more crap. I could eat a lot more stuff that's not good for you. I've seen some videos out there, some comments about the, out there about, you know, the fruits and vegetables. They'll kill you because they have things in there that are bad for you. I mean, now the, the study's coming out and saying that, well, you know, cancer really feeds on sugar. You know, it, it, it needs sugar to survive. And you, if you can reduce your sugar intakes, you'll reduce your cancer chances. Um, I believe that. Um, I feel much better by not having that stuff in me. I knew, I knew not early on, but in the last several years with the acid reflux that I'd have, if I had anything, if I had anything to eat after probably eight o'clock at night, I would have acid reflux at about one o'clock in the morning, no matter what time I went to bed. And especially if I had something sweet, I could have potato chips and it'd be okay. I'd have a little bit. If I had something sweet, if I had some ice cream or if I had some cookies, I'd have acid reflux. You know, there's nothing worse to me. There's nothing worse than waking up at one o'clock in the morning thinking you're choking on your own vomit. Um, and it's not good for you. But since I've been on this diet, I haven't had it once. But then I'm not eating. Once I get done with dinner, I mean, I have about a, as a result of the intermittent fasting, um, I have probably an hour or two, maybe, that I'll eat. I'll get home from work. I'll have maybe a little bit of snack, maybe an egg or some cheese or something. And then we'll go on to dinner. And once dinner's done, I'm done. You know, I'm like a blackjack dealer. I'm on break. I'm done. Um, so there's no more snacking. And I'm, so then I'm not, I'm not has, having the acid reflux anymore. And I'm also not putting on those empty calories just laying on the couch. You know, maybe I could have some of those empty calories if it was eight o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and I'm going to go for a walk and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, but I don't. So I, it's it just, it, it is a lifestyle change. Um, I'll be honest. I mean, like most diets, if they're successful, if you can do that, it has to be a lifestyle change. And at this point I've changed my lifestyle for the last 90 days and it's worked. So it makes me want to keep going at it. I don't know what else to do differently. I don't think I would do anything differently right now based on what I'm doing and the results that I'm getting. I don't see a need to change it. I'll continue to eat the meat, uh, you know, the, the beef or the chicken or the pork. I kind of like to try lamb. Um, my friend Jim has lots of lamb from Costco. Uh, they look, it looks kind of nice, but um, um, I know they, they preach organ meats, um, you know, and I hear, hear people talking about eating the heart or eating liver. And when I was a little kid, I saw my mom eating liver. I think I tried it then. And that's, I hated it then, but then, you know, I was a little kid, so I don't know. I might like it now, but um, they, it does give you variety. People think when I talk to them, they think that, well, if you're just going to eat meat, God, that's boring. What can you eat? Well, and you start naming off all the different things you can have to eat. It's not like you're saying, oh, I'm just going to eat hamburger for the rest of my life, or I'm just going to eat steak, or I'm just going to eat pork chops. You do get a little variety, and you 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 do with it what you can and and you make you make it part of your life
So at this point, I don't mind having a little steak tonight or a little chicken tonight. I do kind of miss salads. I do kind of miss broccoli and maybe some asparagus. I certainly miss cookies, but you know, I'm better off without it. It's, you know, I guess it's like a drug drug addict saying I miss cocaine, but I, I realize I'm alive today because I'm not doing it anymore. So uh, that's maybe simple, but <laughs> my feeling. So, um, Scott, do you have um, a Facebook or a YouTube or anything if people want to reach out to you? Uh, I'm on Facebook. Um, it's just, God, what the heck am I on Facebook? I think I'm just Scott Rasmussen. I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, it's a picture of me and my wife dancing. So, um, you know, I, I, I look at some of the, the, the carnivore sites and I I try not to respond. Some of the times I do, um, but it seems to me that the people that are on Facebook and they're complaining about, or Reddit, I, I'm on Reddit um, to see the, the carnivore stuff on there, and you get people complaining about, oh, I'm not losing weight. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. You got to cut everything out. You got to cut all the carbs out. You, and you can't just, well, I'm, I'm slowly weaning myself off. Well, then you're, then you're only going to slowly lose weight. You know, if you... If you do what the little instruction book says to do, and that's just eat the meat, the eggs, the cheese, and the dairy, then you'll be successful. You know, and I guess I'm living proof of it because I did it for 90 days, and I think I've got great results on my on my uh, uh, my blood tests. One of the blood tests that came back today, the result was they they found ketones in my urine, like. 15 ketones, and it's supposed to be negative. Well, when I researched it, like, why do I have ketones on my urine? Well, it's indicative of the fact that you don't have enough sugar in your body, and so your body is consuming your fat to make energy, which I'm great with, you know. <laughs> so I wanted it. <laughs> um, my uh, my cholesterol, I know the doctor was, was telling me, he was probably going to tell me again now, I should probably not eat so much meat and kind of blend out, but at this point, with my cholesterol results too, my cholesterol being under 200, there's not a whole lot to say. I know the the main cholesterol number I think was 121 or 127, which says is high, but I don't think that's very high at all, especially because my ratios are all perfect. You know, my what is it? My VLDL, the very low density, is 14, and you want it under 30, and I'm at 14, so. I, I I think those results, like I said, are a motivating factor to keep going. You know, if I dieted for ninety days and lost four pounds, what did I just do? You know, what, what it was yeah. not worth it. This, what I'm doing, to me, is worth it. Part of my motivation too is my wife and I are going on vacation um, in February. We're going to Hawaii again, and I told my wife, I said, I don't want to look like I used to look like when I was at the, at the beach or in the swimming pool. And I, I don't know if I shared the picture with you, probably not. It, I've just got a, a huge, I was just absolute balloon. I, I told somebody I look like a, a Macy's Thanksgiving day parade balloon. I was just huge. And I still have the shorts, the swim trunks in that one the picture. I'll send it to you. I still have the trunks and they're still tied from the last time I wore them. And so I put them on a couple of weeks ago and I, I put them on, they're big. I put them on and I let go of them. And they just literally fell down. So I was very happy about that because it wasn't even like, oh, they were tight or, you know, they, they it took a minute for them to fall off. Kind of like those, those videos of the old guys dancing at the weddings, you know, and they raise their hands and their pants fall down. Just it fell right off of me. You know, and those were probably 42s or 44s. Um, the swim trunks now I have are larges. Uh, my jeans now, instead of being 42s and 44s, are 38s, and they're starting to get loose. So uh, it, I'm glad I'm going the other way. My wife says once I grow out, uh, I skinny out of some of my clothes, I have to sell them. I have to get rid of them because she doesn't want me to have that safety net in the closet that, oh, uh, I'm, I feel like I'm putting on some weight. I'll just put those other jeans on. You know, so it, it makes me kind of stay doing this. And I, I like the way I, I look. I like the way I feel. I, like I said, it's it's all these things that are positively happening as a result of doing this that makes you want to stay with it. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us. I really appreciate it. Sure. It was a pleasure.